The Holy Gospel of our Lord Jesus Christ according to John. Now among those who went up to worship at the festival were some Greeks. They came to Philip, who was from Bethsaida in Galilee, and said to him, Sir, we wish to see Jesus. Philip went and told Andrew. Then Andrew and Philip went and told Jesus. Jesus answered them, The hour has come for the Son of Man to be glorified. Very truly, I tell you, unless a grain of wheat falls into the earth and dies, it remains just a single grain. But if it dies, it bears much fruit. Those who love their life lose it, and those who hate their life in this world will keep it for eternal life. Whoever serves me must follow me, and where I am, there will my servant be also. Whoever serves me, the Father will honor. Now my soul is troubled, and what should I say? Father, save me from this hour. No, it is for this reason that I have come to this hour. Father, glorify your name. Then a voice came from heaven. I have glorified it and I will glorify it again. The crowd standing there heard it and said that it was thunder. Others said, an angel has spoken to him. Jesus answered, this voice has come for your sake, not for mine. Now is the judgment of this world. Now the ruler of this world will be driven out. And I, when I am lifted up from the earth, will draw all people to myself. He said this to indicate the kind of death he was to die. The crowd answered him, We have heard from the law that the Messiah remains forever. How can you say that the Son of Man must be lifted up? Who is this Son of Man? Jesus said to them, The light is with you for a little longer. Walk while you have the light, so that the darkness may not overtake you. If you walk in the darkness, you do not know where you are going. While you have the light, believe in the light, so that you may become children of light. And Jesus, after Jesus had said this, he departed and hid from them. The Gospel of the Lord. In the name of the Father, and of the Son, and of the Holy Spirit. Amen. Please be seated. Good evening. I've been walking with a dear friend in my heart. Uh, he recently went through uh, an experience where, uh, and we've all had this moment in our lives, we have to put it all on the line, like your whole being, your whole self. You have to be willing to put yourself out there and risk. You have to risk rejection, but you also have to risk acceptance. And unfortunately, he experienced rejection. This is heartbreaking for my friend. He is an incredibly gifted human being. He has been so blessed and so fortunate in every part of his life, but mostly because of his incredible hard work and devotion and discipline. Discipline to study, discipline to self, discipline in prayer and care and faith. And it felt like for him, for a moment, he came up short. As uh, my wife and I were with him and his family, we were talking about this and uh, it came as a flash to me that there's one thing that my friend had that, that had not had that I had in my life. I was an athlete, and I learned what it was like to lose and still hold your head up. And I was actually told once by my coach, and I love this, I will take a good loss in which you all played with your whole heart and soul and self over an easy win. And I remember vividly from when I was a kid, and we would head to practice on Monday after having won an easy game and played horribly. And we would arrive at the field, and if we had won a hard game, or if we'd played a hard game and done well, we'd have an easy practice. We'd do some drills, we'd do some passing, we'd do some practice and refreshment. If we didn't play well, the coach had his whistle in his hand and would tell us to line up on the baseline, and we would run and run and run until we were weeping with fatigue. The challenge of learning how to put it all on the line, knowing that it could all be loss or it could all be gain, but you have to live without judgment of self, but instead with total devotion to the moment, was kind of a novelty to him in a way that I think was a, a discovery of self. 
At his age, he, he learned a new thing and is learning how to plant that in his soul and grow. This is essential in this moment for us as we make our transit through Holy Week. Holy Tuesday is an odd day because we get the hint of a Jesus who is actually quite popular and is receiving an immense amount of affirmation. You would think he was having a good day. You would think he was having a good day. They're at the festival. There are so many people in Jerusalem. It is cheek to jowl. It is, it is absolutely packed. You can't get through the streets without bumping into someone. And some Greeks come up to one of the disciples, and the crowds are so much of a press that they can't get to Jesus. They say, we would see Jesus. And it requires at least a telephone tree of three or four of them just to get to Jesus, to say, Jesus, there are some people who really want to meet you. They've heard great things about you. You're really popular. You're really getting a lot of attention and glory. And Jesus seems to deflect that and says, well, this is the moment that I've come to be glorified. And then a voice from heaven. I mean, we would all love this when we're in a moment of crisis, wouldn't we? A voice from heaven sounds and says, you're my guy. You're my girl. Hooray for you. He turns around and talks to them about how he's going to die. And he is castigated for being defeatist. This is the tension that we have in our human life as we struggle to make sense of these events. We are given a model of Messiah that points to the deliverance, the victory, the one who brings triumph to the people, liberation to the nation of Judah, of Israel, restoration of the people of God to their place of worship and care in freedom and in grace before the face of God, God's self. And as those who were quoting scripture said, and it has been told to us that, that the Messiah will remain forever. This is our eternal moment. You're telling us that the only way that's going to happen is because of death. There is no greater defeat. There is no greater scandal. This is the challenge for us in Holy Week. To take a moment when we experience the defeat and loss and allow God to work and weave into us the words of the prophet Isaiah. It is too light a thing for me to send you to just one people. I am creating you as a light to the nations. This is that moment when we start to see the transformation of Jesus the Christ, the country preacher from Galilee, the kid from Nazareth with a few friends in tow who's been doing some good work, but has yet to really prove himself in the big city, who will soon be transformed before our eyes both into the object of scorn and ridicule, and then subsequently into the greatest gift that God could possibly tender to humanity and to creation. A new creation, La Nueva Creación, is about to break forth. And it requires of Christ the humblest of submissions. I think one of the greatest challenges we face in life as we grow in faith is the understanding that true growth that sticks and holds is not found in victory, is not found in triumph, but is instead rooted in humility and grounded in the losses that we have shared throughout the course of our journeys. I was once asked if I could ever stop being a priest. I said, absolutely not. Could you stop being a rector? Well, retirement's going to happen sooner or later. Yeah, probably I could. But there are certain things I'll miss about being a rector, and they're not the things you think. 
I mean, I love baptisms and blessing new babies. I love doing funerals and weddings. I love being here and preaching. I love all of that. But you know what else I love? I know it sounds weird. I love broken toilets. I love leaky roofs. I love winky and crazy electrics. I love a broken organ. Because all of these small defeats that challenge us and stretch us as the people of God form us and renew us. It is too light a thing that I should just send you to preach the gospel. It's too light a thing that I should just send you to sit in a pew. It's too light a thing that I should just make you volunteer in the soup kitchen. It's too light a thing that I should ask you to teach Sunday school. I am going to make you a light to the world, says God. And all your losses and all those challenges I will take and transform into light and life. And a voice from heaven came and said, I have glorified it, and I will glorify it again. This is the night we renew our love for the challenges of loss in our lives that transform us and consecrate us even as it transformed and consecrated the Christ for a purpose of grace and renewal and resurrection. Amen.